Hello and welcome to By The Numbers. I'm FMTT and I hope you're doing well. This is season eight. So we're going quite far with this beta save that we've been um, doing really. The last episode was stats heavy. We made some decisions based off that, so we won't go through the stats again. But if you want to know the, the numbers that caused me to change a few things, have a look at that. I'm going to take you through the transfers we made in the off season, because we're about ready to get back into the league against Crusaders, which we'll play in a kind of second half of the video. I'm going to take you through the transfers so you can see what's happened. Um, I don't know how best to kind of say it, but um, all the effort I put into doing the stats and deciding that I was going to have Bonis and Ward as my front two was kind of ruined by the fact that not long ago, Ward got perched by a different team. Um, so I'll show you the transfers. Let's go to the transfer history. Ignore the, the ins for the moment. Um, but basically, 21st of July, Balamina United, who are in the Premiership with us, um, offered him a contract and he went to them. I've been trying to offer him a contract all through summer to get him to stay with us, but he didn't think the quality of the team was good enough to keep him. And he was just on a rolling non-contract. I couldn't persuade him. But worth about £300. I think he was like 230 plus 70 for appearances and things like that. And I just couldn't keep him, which is kind of... I mean, it's not ruined the stats. So I know from the last video that I'm going to be giving Bonus more time, that Devlin had to go and that McLaughlin is um, back up currently. Uh, in a second, you might get start unless I can find someone to replace uh, Mark Ward, which I kind of don't. But yeah, that, that wasn't planned, so I was a bit sad to lose him because I thought maybe we might get more out of him this season. Because he played a couple of seasons for us. He only got 14 league goals um, in almost 50 league matches, so not fantastic to be honest, but he was going to get better is what we were going to do. A couple of other players... Youth players really have gone out. Nothing huge there. Um, if we look at sort of released players as well, let Daryl Evans go. Getting old, he's not high in the, the rankings. He's six foot four, but that's not enough anymore. Carl Robinson, 31, wasn't particularly well rated even now. So when we look at him, the scouts look at him, they're giving him a 16. They think he's okay for level four and we're the top tier. Uh, Keevan McCallion didn't play much last match again 26 is what we're rating him as he, he wouldn't um, he wasn't getting in the team and Devlin poor Devlin attributes aren't great rated a 17 as well um, he got 3 in 11 last season he might have got more if we played him a bit more but 12 in 31 was the best he'd ever managed for us but he'd been with us from our initial promotion, second promotion into Premiership, so he's been part of the journey. He's, we'll think of him fondly and we'll follow what happens to him, but he just wasn't going to be for us. So that brings us onto the transfers then in terms of who we brought in. Um, so first of all, we've got Connor McCurry, Mac, uh, 21 years old, striker, looks okay, he's rated reasonably highly. Uh, he was well, uh, thanks for not Breda, hadn't actually scored many, um, but he's rated reasonably. Um, so again, he's currently operating at the level four level because he's young, they reckon he could be a Premier League player eventually. So we thought we'd give him a shout and his wages aren't horrendous, £35 per week we can afford. Uh, then we brought in Glenn Byrne, who is a defensive midfielder. Because we're lacking a bit of umph there. We had McGreevy who was doing okay. We had Wright who was meant to be all right, but was kind of anonymous, but at least in a good way. Um, so we're paying him £150 a week. He was previously at Carrick. He had, was produced by Linfield. So he's played in the Premiership. So he's got some Premiership experience. And basically, I think he got rated like an 80 something or something by the scouts. So he's a perfectionist. Team worker, brave, leader, meant to be a decent player for us already. He could be good, so he can improve a little bit. Not got much flair, but that's fine, because I'm going to be playing him as a defensive midfielder. So I think he's going to be a good signing. Um, 
we signed on a free from Lan, so Lan are the biggest team, uh, Ronnie McDonald, partly because of, the, of his name. So we've got Ronald here, um, and he is rated more highly than all of our keepers already. So he's rated better than Colin McCallion, Paul McLaughlin, Jamie King, one of our youth ones. They reckon he's working at a, a championship level already and could be a good um, premiership or, or a premiership player eventually. So he's kind of an upgrade, even though he looks a bit a bit rubbish. He is an upgrade on the others because they're also rubbish. And he's six foot four, so that works. Got Paddy McCallion, who is a right winger. So we've lost Robinson. McGowan that we had on load, we're not getting back. Spence is pretty terrible. Heron is meant to be okay, but he's never really um, managed it. So we decided we'd get him in. He's already worth 33 grand. Uh, he looks okay. 10 for crossing, 10 for corners. Good first touch. Passing is not great, but his technique's good. Physicals are all right. Um, and again, he's got some premiership experience. He's got some champion ex championship experience. Um, he's got the potential to be good playing the championship level. And although the championship level seems terrible because we're in the premiership, um, I just realised judging ability one, judging potential one, we need to sort out the coach report. Um, he's better, isn't he? He's professional and so on. Um, I don't know why this is a the ability to be decent is a con, but yeah, I'm saying that you know it's championships a step up even though we're in the Premiership. That's because a lot of our players were rated as being level four, so non-league. Um, so this is a definite step up. I've got Harry Edgar from Dirkview. Um, Reason about playing time, but at a much lower level. He's again championship level could get better potentially. Um, I think he's unlikely to prove, but actually he's good and he's versatile. He could play left and right fullbacks. He could play on the left wing if need be. So he should be quite good. And again, when he's not paying seventy pounds per week, that's fine. I've got Darren Strain from Ballyclare, six foot two. Um, can be a defender on £50 a week. Valley Clare, Bangor is a bit of championship experience. And again, leading player for the championship. He makes good decisions. Uh, we've got Matt McVeigh, who again is another defender, six foot one. Uh, was at Not Breda, was playing reasonably well there. But again, championship level could be premiership. Better than McGovern. Uh, we've got Gary Gregg, who is a right uh, fullback, right defender. Looks okay. Doesn't look necessarily a huge amount better than, say, Clark or Little, but he is a bit better. And again, he's rated at Bluefin Sport. I don't think Little is what's Little rated as. But uh, Little is rated at Bluefin Sport. It'd be one of the few, I think. Um, but he should be all right. Then we've got Kyle Devlin that we got in a free. He was previously from Linfield. Um, oh, well, he was from Ballin and Millard. And Linfield signed him and never actually played him. He's played in the Premiership. He's done okay. And he's a left winger. And again, Dunn was being rated as like a, a level four winger. So he is much, much better than that in terms of how he's being rated. And again, he can cross, he can take corners. His touch is okay. His passing technique is terrible, but... Even though he looks bad, he is an improvement. And then we've got our record signings. This is the first time we've spent money on an actual player. So we had a wage a transfer budget about 11, but half of it into our wages just to shore things up. And then spent 4.9 on bringing in a player who was rated 100 by my scouts. And I'm building him up. He's rated 100. We spend money on him, record breaking money. This is what he looks like. He's already getting worse just by being here. 17 years old, 120 pounds. He looks okay. Playing the championship and got 14 goals. Um, developed by a, what was a premiership side at the time. A scout just went nuts for him. I reckon he's already premiership level player. He's what we needed to maybe replace that kind of striker situation that we had 
So this is what we've got. We've got McLaughlin and Ronald as potential keepers. We've got plenty of right backs. Strain, McGovern, and they're probably going to be the ones fighting for the central defence positions. We've got cover on the left. So we've got Edgar, Devlin. Um, we've still got Dunn, who can play left and right. McLaughlin, who can play on the left, but Dunn doesn't look great anymore, does he? He's 30. Again, leading player for non-league, and that's who we've been using the past couple of seasons in the Premiership. We've got Heron, McCallion, Dunn again on the right. Oh, I forgot we've also got Gordon on the left if we need him. Um, and we've got a couple of players in the youth team who can play on the right if we need to bring them in. If we're running out of people, we've got Spence, for example, we can bring in. Burn's going to be good, I think. We've still got Cockroft in that attacking midfielder position. I could, well, I did find someone who was better, but he didn't want to talk to me. Our reputation seems to have gone up a bit, so more players are willing to talk, but they want a lot more money, so I couldn't afford him. But I'm pretty confident, really, with um, the team we've got, because again, I've got Bonis. I'm playing with Greg, got McLaughlin as background. Um, I've still got Kyle Gorman, who's rated as being okay. Um, got Connor Macari, who could be something good in the future. Got our own Reese Hunter, who's not looking as good in comparison, but has scored in the past for us. And another youth player, Connor McGrath, who's a bit more of a target man, who we can give an opportunity to. So I think we've got depth. The player who disagrees with that is Glenn Byrne, who started getting unhappy when Ward was sold. Uh, but I've not been able to kind of turn that round. So, yeah, I'm actually quite confident. With the transfers, I feel like we actually have improved the team. We're still favourites to go down, so we're still you know, 1,001 for the title. Still expected to finish at the bottom of the table. And the league is tougher this season because of the teams we've got in there. Um, there's no weak teams like us. We are the weakest team, historically, rep-wise. Um, there's no one for us to really pick on, in this sense. But I feel like we've improved the squad reasonably like noticeably in that sense finances we've got 36 grand we're projected to go down because we're spending just over what we should be on wages but it's for a good good reason i think we've improved there it's just whether we can hold things together what are things tactically considering changing so this is the formation we had all of last season the season before and so on I've adjusted it so we might be pressing forward instead of a, def a deep line forward. Because uh, as I mentioned before, when we were doing the analysis in the last video, the deep line forward wasn't particularly creative or productive. So maybe this will help. It could be there's a knock on effect. And actually, we go back to a deep line forward, but we'll give this a go. The other thing we're going to do is try and shore up the defense by. Um, by having two no-nonsense centre-backs. Rather than ball-playing centre-backs, no-nonsense ones, tackle hard, kick more directly. So stopping them from bringing the ball forward, dribbling as much, playing short passes, getting them to go long because their first touch, their passing, their technique's not great, might as well go back to that just to make us a little bit defensively or sound in comparison. Um, yeah. So that's what we're going to go with. Hopefully this works. If not, we'll go back to the other one. We, we can change it a little bit if we need to. I've not changed any of the other instructions, but this is hopefully going to help improve things along with the players that we've got. So again, pretty helpful, pretty confident. And we're going to see how this goes against Crusaders. And they're a very strong team and they will very likely beat us. Uh, so I'm just going to take a pause because I've got a phone call. Um, and then we'll be back for the match. Right, so as is tradition, I've cleared the squad and we're going to build it up again just to make sure we blow out all the cobwebs so we're not giving positions to players we shouldn't be. So Ronnie McDonald is going to start. Apparently he's better than Paul McLaughlin, to be honest. Um, oh, oh, how did Paul McLaughlin do last season? Only one clean sheet for us in 12 games, which is really enough. Um, so Ronnie McDonald's going to start. 
On the right back position, we're going to give Gary Gregg the go, new player. On the left back position, Scott Williamson is still our go to there, and Edgar will be our backup, I think, for that one. Central defence, we're going to play Mac McFay. Looks pretty good. Um, next choice is do we want Josh McGovern, who was good and is a good no nonsense, or do we want new boy Darren Strain? I think I'm going to go for Josh McGovern. We can rotate them and play around with them. Defensive midfield position is going to be Glenn Byrne. That's a no brainer for that one. On the right, we've got Paddy McCallion. On the left, we're going to have Kyle Devlin. Attacking midfield is going to be Cockcroft. Target man is going to be Bonnet, who's so poorly rated, he's all the way down here, as far as they're concerned. And pressing forward, we're going to have Eddie Gregg. And then we will have, on the bench, Little, Strain, um, Downey, Wright, Dunn, I guess. McLaughlin's injured, so let's put on Gordon, and then we need a striker. Who are we going to put on? Um, let's give Gorman a bit of a run in before we start going for the, the younger players. This is kind of Gorman's last chance. So there we go. Let's see how this. Greg wants number nine. We promised him number nine. I have number nine. Hopefully that inspires him to actually um, score. Why is it warming up so? There we go. Is Bar the one he used to play for us? Bar's the one we produced. He's gone on to have a really good career. Yeah. Perfect. We're underdogs. Let's tell us strikes we've got faith and bonus is happy because we do have faith. We've spent ages crunching the numbers and the numbers say trust bonus. Oh, Devlin's managed to get someone. It's not a bad start. That was quite nice. I mean, I'm pretty sure Devlin was offside. Yeah, yeah he is. But that wasn't a bad move, was it? Crusaders are a solid side there. I think they were in the sort of top table in the, not the promotion group, but the kind of playoff for Europe group. They were in the bottom relegation one like we were. Cockcroft in. Greg? Is that easy is offside? Well done, Greg. Well done. Bonus assists to Greg. So it's all from the corner routine. Bonus flicks it on. Greg at the back post. 17 year old Eddie Greg. Trying to earn that 4.9k that we spent on him. McGovern, oh that's terrible. McDonald's doing all right. McVeigh, Bonis. I mean, it's too early to tell whether this is going to go well for us. We've squandered leads before and we'll squander them again, but I'm not completely. Ah, oh, there we go, penalty. McVeigh giving away the penalty. It didn't look like a penalty to me, to be honest. Nah. Okay, never mind. It wasn't from open play, it was from penalty. We could deal with that. Crusaders are stronger than us. I would be happy with getting scraping points against the bigger sides. We'll just go back to it. Fairly even so far. Base standing up well to that one. What's the other Greg doing? Cockroft goes long. Greg's in a good position to try and break free, but didn't quite get there. Saved by Ronnie McDonald. Callion through to Greg. What a. Oh, that was a really good ball. Good ball, good run. And going back to that nerdy video. That would be a really good X assist for the player making the pass and an X received pass because of that. And XG, he just didn't score it. That's promising already.
they're starting to edge it though now. They are starting to put us under a bit more pressure. Well cleared by McVeigh. Break to Bonis. What's the big man going to do? Back across the burn. Devlin. Greg. That was beautiful. Is he offside? Oh, that was beautiful. Greg twisted for that header. Look at that. And Bonis is there to pick it up. So I think it's probably fair to say that Greg and Bonis are showing some potential as a strike partnership. Oh, Cockcroft. Off his feet for that tackle. Ooh, McManus going over there. Come at McDonald. McCallion not really doing much with that. He's been a bit quiet, McCallion. Oh, that was a good shot. Well cleared. Again, Crusaders are more dangerous, but when we've had chances, we've had some nice chances. Fay goes long in a weird, weird kind of way. Break down. He's winning the ball in the air quite a bit. He's not the tallest. McCallion past one and then takes the shot. Not bad. Williamson back out. Come on. Go on, Devlin. Not Shea Devlin, it's Kyle Devlin. It's the new Devlin. Got a yellow card. He's probably going to get himself sent off if he carries on doing that. Good save again. I need to hold on to half time so I can take Devlin off. He is scrappy. And also we might lose because maybe our dynamics are off. Got a lot of new players. We've had to change captains and things like that. Well cleared. Um, old lady plays is a big believer in you know the dynamics all from the set piece. Never mind. Going as a draw, it's a sucker punch before half time, but okay, we'll live with that. Yeah, Old Lady Plays is a big believer if you watch her videos and her tips in, on sort of dynamics and her article and dictate the game as well. And I've kind of just basically screwed all the mechanics by having so many new players come in and start. Right, who are we going to put on the left? Do we want Dunn or do we want Gordon? Let's put Dunn on for the moment. Um, I feel like we've been a little unlucky. We I mean, they deserve their two goals, but I think we maybe deserve three. And that penalty was soft, actually, so... No, they don't deserve their two goals. I think no matter what happens in this match, it's actually a very promising start. It's loud, it's fine. I need to get his training to defend set pieces. Yeah, of course he's offside. He was standing off the pitch, I guess. Let's sub Paddy McCallion. So we'll bring on Al Gordon. Swap these two around because Dunn can play on the right. I've also used the female football manager spreadsheet to look at side again we are riding our look a bit we have used the um email football manager spreadsheet to check the attributes of players as well because i've made a few position changes so we've got no nonsense rather than ball playing defenders and all of my defenders are better at being no nonsense than they are ball playing that seems like a sensible choice just in terms of the fit of the role um what else should we do mcgovern is apprehensive and tired so let's give darren strain of time there we're struggling in the air let's bring on six foot one six foot one he's tall he's they're all about at least six foot that's like the minimum requirement greg with a long throw bonus doesn't manage to get it out to anyone oh, it looks like it's their counter good tackle by greg 
It's going to have for a corner though, and they're good at set pieces. That was a weird delivery. I'll get it out. McVeigh, block tackle, runs loose, Greg gets it out. 21 shots to our five. He's not offside. He's not offside. The brace for Greg on his debut, and that's what is. That was a cheeky delivery by Cockroft, and Greg perched that one. Nice fine. Look at that. Far post again from set piece. 3 2 is undeserved when you look at the. There we go, that's why it's undeserved. Pegged us back straight away. I was about to say it's undeserved, and I was going to be saying that because I'm a magnanimous in my kind of win, but now that we've been pegged back to a draw, harsh. Really good, really good shot there. Not much we could have done about that one. Go on, Dan, one last, one last attack. Towards Greg, but not quite good enough. A few seconds left. Nah, nothing doing from that. Come on, that's got to be it. Not going to do anything with this, are we? Yeah. Although Greg was almost three. So three all looks like a bit of a cluster. Um, I'm pleased with three all because Crusaders we thought were going to beat us. I was expecting a big loss if we'd gone on last season's form. In fact, if you look at the schedule from last season, what do we do against Crusaders? Um, this is where I find out we beat them, isn't it? Uh, lost 2 0. Lost on penalties in the cup. Beat them there. Thought we played them more than that. Where did they finish last season? That's the question, isn't it? So last season they were sixth, 42 points, so they were well above us. Um, but yeah, I was expecting us to, to lose that one. So to come out with a brace ready, Greg, three all and a point, I'll happily take that. And I can go back and analyse what's going on, but Greg and Bonnis linked up quite nicely, and Greg was a bit of a threat there. So I'm happy. I mean, it could still all come crumbling down. Um, it feels like the changes I've made because of some of the attribute stuff and some of the stat stuff might pay off, which is good because it's by the numbers. So thanks very much for watching.